My name is Alfred Okonsi. This morning, in fact, for the past almost three weeks now, the conversation about some suspected or reported expired rice being fed to um, senior high schools, a number of them across the country, has been one that has generated a lot of conversation and concern amongst parents especially who have been reading and hearing this conversation about this expired rice. Since then, in fact, since Samuel Okuja to Ablakwa put out this matter in one of his many exposés recently, there's been a number of reactions from the Ministry of Education, the Chief of Staff, some executives of the MPP, and some members of government all speaking about this this particular expose that was put out. The latest is from the Food and Drugs Authority. They have insisted that no student in any senior high school was fed with expired rice. And they insist that whatever charges that were leveled against the said company laments investment was for what they described as regulatory violations. As to what that means, we have a statement and the details of it from the FDA, which we'll get into. But while we're at it, there's something else coming from the Conference of Heads of Assisted Senior High Schools, which we'll touch on as well as we go on. Samuel Okuja Tua Blakwa is a member of parliament for the North Tong constituency and seeking the mandate of the people again in the next two weeks, exactly two weeks away from today. And also is the chair of the Government Assurances Committee of Parliament on, and a, a member of a number of committees in this eighth parliament. Samuel Okuja Tua Blakwa, good morning. Welcome. Hi, good morning, Alfred. Good to see you. It's good to see you as well. And uh, I'll be joined by a number of our guests as we go on as well here on, on Key Point. Now, be before we get into the, the latest one, you know, in the next two weeks, two, two weeks, exactly two weeks away from today, two weeks, Saturday, 7th December, you are going to seek the mandate of the people again. What is happening in your constituency? I stand you are faced by a competent opponent <laughs> who's causing you sleepless nights <laughs> really uh, let me extend uh, very warm greetings to the distinguished viewers of tv3 and uh, uh, i would like to use this opportunity uh, to uh, extend very very warm regards to the chiefs and people of the north town constituency and to thank them for their continuous loyalty their continuous support and the collective strides that we are making to improve the lot of our people. Uh, as we speak, uh, we are currently carrying out free hernia surgeries in my constituency. You know that uh, uh, I built together with uh, uh, partners, uh, Manos Unidas of Spain, an NGO, uh, we built the Atamil's surgical block uh, in my constituency mm. in the Tagaji area. That entire north bank of the Volta region I see. has never had a, a surgical facility. As we speak, that surgical facility is in use this week. Um, as of yesterday, we had done over 50 free hernia surgeries, and we continue. So I want to use this opportunity to mm. thank the doctors, uh, Dr. Cham, and uh, his colleagues who have volunteered to make good use of the surgical facility. They love the facility, they love the equipment, and um, these are state-of-the-art equipment. And uh, I'm told that if um, uh, my constituents had gone to the hospital, they have had to pay a great deal of money, even if you have uh, uh, health insurance. So to have this uh, hernia surgery uh, free of charge uh, is, is really uh, something that they are excited about. And uh, I'm receiving a lot of calls uh, from the patients, from the uh, relatives. They are really, really touched about the gesture. Interestingly, a number of people, since they saw the, 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 the pictures mm -hmm. and the footage of the free hernia surgery have called across the country that they also want to benefit. They said, well, if the doctors are, because the doctors are on their feet from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. 
so we, we want to see how we can also accommodate uh, a few more people outside uh, the constituency. But these are the interventions that I continue to carry out. You saw the last time that all the BEC candidates going to secondary school, we called all of them, over 1,500 of them, and were able to help them with their procurement, um, uh, their prospectus items, pardon me, the prospectus items, chop box, you know, yeah. mattresses, provisions. And then um, uh, the um, vocational um, uh, artisans, uh, those who are doing apprenticeship, we've also provided uh, tools for them to, to, so that they can, they can serve as startup kits to uh, initiate their own businesses. So hair dryers, sewing machines, uh, laptops for mm. our final year students. So there's a lot that we are doing. So for us, um, it's not really about just campaigning. We continue with the, you know, I do these medical treaties every quarter. So we are continuing with our interventions that we do well, to improve the law. Because that's, that's, that's my understanding of politics, that well, politics that, that, should be about, about improving the lot of the people. But let me say, as I conclude, that um, uh, I expect that two weeks from now, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama will be elected. Um, I haven't seen any campaigner who really works as hard as he does. Um, he was in the Eastern region yesterday, uh, just next to my constituency, the so German constituency, and then went to a Cropong. He's just working very hard, and his policies are really uh, transformational. Uh, many people are looking up to him, to some of the things we'll be discussing today, to crack the whip, to clean up the system, to reset Ghana, to stop the state capture, to stop the corruption, and to usher us into a new dawn of integrity, the leadership of integrity, where institutions are protected, where uh, the credibility of our institutions are not attacked, and where there is prosperity for all people. Because so you, you, you mentioned uh, what, what, what has been done in the last few days in that constituency. In fact, when you put it out on social media, one of the questions that many, many people were asking is why you, you all wait few weeks to the elections before you start doing these things, when you know that there are so many people in your constituency who have been living with hernia. Why do you wait till this moment? before you start doing because you want their votes. I will ask, Why do you take advantage of that? I will ask, I will ask good, good question. I will ask all those people making those comments to just stay on my wall, keep scrolling up, and go all the way as far back as a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, six years ago, all the way. Just go all the way. I mean, from day one, that's what I do. I, I am not one who waits uh, for Well, we're seeing a lot elections. of last-minute projects because you, you just not, want to get the people not, to not, vote not for me. You. you shouldn't be hoodwinking people. No, 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 not at all. I'm not one to do that. I'm not one to do that. I mean, there's a reason why in the last election, the 2020 election, I got the widest victory margin in the whole of Ghana. There's a reason. You know, the whole Ghana, you know, 89.7%. You can check the Electoral Commission's data. Um, so... We are not people who just abandon the people, okay. leave them, and then when it's time for elections, we show up. I mean, my people are so discerning, you know, so rational, they will not fall for that. Uh, so, as I told you, this uh, Dr. Cham, who I talked about, I've been working with him for more than 10 years now. He's my public health advisor. Um, we put up this um, uh, Atamil surgical block. It's, it's almost three years now. and. Um, uh, we, we have been doing these medical outrages every quarter. You know, just, just, just go on my social media handles and you'll see the work we do uh, on a weekly basis, on a daily basis. Uh, we do not. I mean, remember that this uh, hernia surgery, for example, you don't just call up people to come. So they have to first come for screening, which was done several months ago, and then the doctors must check that you know, they, they really are fit to go under the knife, you know, and then the surgery dates are fixed, and then we have to put together the medications and all of that. So it's, it, it, these are not things that just happen overnight, you know. Because so you, you mentioned, so, so, so we rest assured. You, you mentioned state capture and everything that you have been doing over the period. Just a minute, quick update on this uh, GIS land matter that the last time you were here, just about over a month ago, we spoke about. What's, what's the latest to that particular attempt to take some lands belonging to the Ghana International School? Quick one. Yes, what? so, so um, 
<clears throat> I can assure the people of Ghana that we continue to be vigilant. And so far, those unscrupulous elements who decided to work under the cover of darkness to steal that asset which belongs to GIS, they have not succeeded. GIS has been able to complete its fencing project. Mm -hmm. um, the checks that we have conducted confirm unimpeachably that the land c continues to belong to the GIS. Okay. Uh, so you can't be rest assured. But I want to use this opportunity to also reveal that that same marauding gang operating within the cantonment Laboni airport area, we want them to know that we are monitoring the activities, we have them under the radar, and it is just a matter of time. And look, one of the main reasons why the overwhelming majority of Ghanaians will be voting for His Excellency John Dramani Mahama is for gangs like that, nation records like that, to be brought to book. Are you aware that within that same enclave, you have those same operators terrorizing families? The Lomote family have lost their property, number 49, Laboni. I put out those details mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, where they are building that they have owned for 60 years and more, demolished by a company called Dream Citrix with high political connections. I put out all of those facts. Very, very high political connections all the way to the presidency. The money mm -hmm. to get the Lands Commission to give them a lease, with the Lands Commission has now withdrawn uh, I, I've, I've, published, I've published the letter by Timothy and Nidoho. The, the, the lease the Lands Commission yes. gave and they, to they, this company? Yes, to Dream Citrix. And they claim that they, they made a mistake. I mean, how can you make such a costly mistake? And as we speak, this company, Dream Citrix, the owners, the, 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 the family, after suffering the unjust demolition, decided to take over their land, at least go back to salvage what is theirs. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they decided to erect a wall. Will you believe that this Dream Citrix continues to enjoy police protection and a few weeks ago went to demolish the land? After demolishing the, the property, yeah, they, they went to demolish the wall, pardon me. You know, so still enjoying police protection and acting with impunity. When the Lands Commission has withdrawn the lease that it was an error, <laughs> nobody really believes that error. If there, if there wasn't the oversight that we carried out and the public outreach, you know, that, uh, that, that, that emerged after that expose, they will have gotten away with that land. And there are many other families that have reached out to me, you know, within that enclave, facing this, you know, cruel state capture where they come in, they manage to manipulate the system, they have all kinds of documents. And in this case, in the Dream Citrix case, you have the uh, La Dade Cotopon Municipal Assembly giving them the all green you know, to go ahead, when they should have known that that is a property that belongs to the state housing company. Okay. Now the state housing company has also written saying that, look, uh, LADMA and the Lands Commission have absolutely no business and that those owners of the property are legitimate owners and they should never have given the lease to Dream Citrix. So these are the things going on, you know, the impunity. Now, as we speak, this, this Helpless family have lost their property. It's been demolished. It's now bare land. And uh, they are in a fight of their lives to maintain the land and to prevent others, you know, those marauding, you know, state capture elements from taking over their property. I mean, what kind of, what, 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 what kind of jungle, what kind of lawlessness, you know, is the Akufuado Baumia government superintendent? So, so, and this so cannot be allowed to the, continue. Uh, Lands Commission says that lease was a mistake. Yes. I see. But the latest that you, you put out is what has generated a number of reactions. In fact, the latest is the FDA, the Food and Dust Authority, responding and, and, and going on record to explain that they confirmed that the rice was safe for, for consumption after rigorous lab tests. This was how they described their tests rigorous lab tests and before that 
the Ministry of Education had come out to clearly indicate that they will not sit down for expired rights repackaged to be fed some senior high school students, as you have alleged. Now, I also hear from uh, the head of public affairs, the public relations officer for the Ministry of Education, Chrissy uh, Kwating, who spoke to us on this matter. And, and why you are still insisting that the, the narrative put out by the FDA is not a clear and full representation of what is happening. Let's listen to him. Uh, there is not disputed that indeed uh, the consignment that came into the country by December 2023, uh, it was very close or near to its uh, shelf life in terms of the date that had been uh, been on the original labeling, being the best before date. But of course, uh, the company had apparently written to uh, FDA with the aim of seeking to extend the best before date. Right. FDA had to uh, require certain tests on the product before they extended it. But after that was granted, the company, again, from the findings that we made, wrote to FDA and requested FDA to give them an approval. And based on that approval, the company was going to do a repackaging. Of course, if you had read the earlier notice that we brought out, mm. according to the company, they were just doing that to prevent issues of backlash. Because, I mean, people may not really get the whole understanding as to how the product is labeled within a specific date where the best before date was supposed to be elapsed and then an extension has been granted. Okay. So it was that approval that was denied by the FDA. That is where even the company found themselves in trouble when the FDA decided to find them an amount of 100000 hmm. So even with regards to the fine, the fine was in relation to the repackaging, the fact that they did not get approval for the repackaging hmm. and not the wholesomeness of the food. Of course, I, I, I do not have the capacity, the authority, even the expertise to make such determination as to whether or not a food is wholesome. I mean, likewise, okay. the Ministry of Education. Uh, but FDA makes such determination, and I'm sure, uh, obviously, they align with their own internal protocols to be able to arrive with that conclusion. All right. So the most fundamental question is whether or not the food was wholesome and mm. safe. And that the FDA has answered in the affirmative that yes, the food was safe. The second question as to whether they had approval to rebag the food, they didn't have the approval. And that is how come the FDA uh, slashed the fine on them. Mm. You, food and drugs, that's the Ministry of Education, Public Relations Officer, Chrissy Kwating, there. So he concedes to a number of things, and also defends or denies other issues that you put out. To the fact that Yes, the food was wholesome and safe. That's number one. That's their position. Second point that, yes, the company, this Lamens Investment, was fined 100,000 CDs for regulatory violations. And that they, they didn't have the approval to repackage the expired rice, even though the FDA said they had done rigorous lab tests confirming its wholesomeness. The company was not giving the license to repackage. And we also found out that the, the company changed the, the country of origin for their rice when they repackaged it from, from, the, from India to made in Ghana. All of that, they say they have been fined for this, for this 22,000 bags of 50 kg rice. Now, a number of my guests are going to be joining us in a bit as we go on. But why do you still question or as it were, raise concerns about the FDA's position on this matter, because they are saying that after their rigorous test, the rice was wholesome. Yeah. Well, first of all, let me commend you, TV3, for uh, really taking keen interest in this matter. Uh, since I put out this expose, uh, you are one of the media houses that have followed. You've really done a lot of uh, independent background work, and uh, you've followed this keenly. The continuous discussion this morning shows um, the commitment that you have, uh, particularly to the children of our country. The Constitution of Ghana enjoins all of us to make sure that we protect the rights of children. Parliament is enjoined under the Constitution to even pass laws that to safeguard 
because children are so vulnerable. We're talking about 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds, minors, really. And, uh, I mean, they're voiceless. Who speaks for them? Who seeks their interests? And that is what this is about. So as I commend TV3 and the um, number of media houses that have really taken this matter up, I want to also emphasize that my sole interest in this matter, I am a parent. I have children, schooling in Ghana. Fundamentally, that is what this is about. Who speaks for these vulnerable children? Who are voiceless? Who don't have a platform? Well, the chief of staff says and, that uh, and, there's and, no place for propaganda and, in education. And, and, and who, who protects their interests? Mm -hmm. That is why we have all of these institutions established by law to make sure that our children and all of us are safe. We are talking about a public health matter. This is about health and safety. It is about lives. So let us not be distracted at all. Fundamentally, this is about the health of our children, the health of students placed under the care of the Ministry of Education, the Ghana Education Service. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about institutions we have given tremendous resources to, taxpayer funds, to make sure that they do the right thing to protect these children and indeed to protect all of us. So let's situate this in proper context. Right. Now background, what really happened? Because I've noticed that a lot of people are fudging the issues quite deliberately. So on the 20th of December, 2023, the Ashanti Regional Police Command and the FDA received an alert. And God bless that patriot, that good Samaritan. I don't know him or her, never met him or her, but that person is a real hero in this matter, in this scandal, that mm -hmm. unknown person unknown person from who gave that unknown Ghanaian who gave the alert I am not a hero in this matter I'm not I'm just doing my constitutional mandate and I seek I seek no plaudits I seek no credit I insist that all the credit all the plaudits all praise must go to this unknown Ghanaian mm. who gave this tip off now what was the alert he gave or she gave the alert was that at the National Food Buffer Stock Company storage facility in Bokrom, Kumasi. Can you believe that? Mm. Not at the company's warehouse or some hideout, somewhere removed, and they were engaged in this criminal enterprise. At a state facility. That's a buffer stock. The buffer stock company storage facility in Kumasi. At the time the alert came, out of the 22,050 kg bags of Moshosho rice from India, they had rebagged 15,000. As of this 20th December. As of 20th December, they had rebagged 15,000. Now, all of us, please, just cut out a lot of the attacks on me and their attempts to really just fudge these issues and muddy the waters. If you have nothing to hide, if you mean well, you care about the health of our children, why were you secretly, clandestinely, without recourse to the loss of our country, rebagging rice and what were they doing in the rebargain? Mm -hmm. The Moshosho rice from India, which had met its best before date, mm -hmm. December 2023. Remember, this was going on in December 2023. Mm -hmm. So it had met its best before date. They were transferring the rice into new bags and have published their pictures. Mm -hmm. we, 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 your, 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 your viewers can put it out. I have the... The, 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 the 
evidence here, mm -hmm. which I'll leave, I'll leave all of these documents with you. So you have Moshosho rice. This is, this is the original label. 25% broken white rice, double polished sortex, Indian rice. Origin, India. Production, December 2021. Best before, December 2023. Net weight, 50 kg. Batch number, 12 slash 2021. Four, registration number, FDA CE 20701. That was the original mm -hmm. bag, as imported. Moshosho rice from India. Then, criminally, they transferred the rice into a new bag which had this inscription, Sidao Echoas. Echoas. I mean, can you believe that? Sidao Echoas. Echoas. Regional Food Security Reserve. Net weight, 50 kg. Origin, Ghana. So in, in this rebugging, the, the name of the, of the rice was changed. The or, country of origin changed. And to, and, and, and to make matters worse, hmm? to make matters worse, the new bags did not contain any expiry date or best before date. Uh, so, no. so you mean the one with the Sida? The, the ECOWAS bags, the, yes. That's the repackage. The repackage didn't have one. any expiry date. No expiry date. But how, and the they, origin change from India to Ghana. Can you believe that? Now, what do our laws say? I have here the Public Health Act 2012 at 851. Section 103 provides, a person who manufactures, labels, packages, sells, or advertises food in a manner that is false, misleading, deceptive, or misbranded as regards its character, nature, value, additives, substance, quality, quantity, composition, merit, or safety, commits an offense. Our laws are very, very clear. Very, very clear on this matter. You come to section 106. It says, a person shall not manufacture a food for sale unless the food is manufactured under the supervision of a person with appropriate knowledge and qualification who can ensure the purity, quality, and wholesomeness of the food. So, Multiple laws have been breached violently in this matter. If you read the LI 1541, the Ghana Standards Board Food, Drugs, and Other Goods General Labeling Rules 1992, it's very clear that no person shall offer for sale, distribute, import, or otherwise dispose of prepackaged food or drug unless the food or drug is marked or labeled with the name of the food or drug, a list of ingredients in the food or in respect of drugs, active ingredients showing the amounts present in the drug, an indication of the minimum durability in the form of date of manufacture, an expiry date, or best before date, or use by date in respect of food, or two, date of manufacture, an expiry date in respect of drugs. So, Act 851 has been violated. LI 1541 has been violated. So when the chief of staff says that, oh, Ghanaians should ignore all of what I'm saying is all untrue, it's mere propaganda. The height of recklessness, of irresponsibility. You are chief of staff. You are to coordinate government machinery. Invite all of these institutions. You don't do that. You don't even look at the evidence. You don't look at the documents, the facts. And then you, you hurriedly jump into such reckless conclusions. You are a mother. You, you, you should care about... The health of these children. He says, she, she says propaganda and rumor mongering has no place in education. How can, that's how what can, you are doing. How can, how can, all, how can all of this be rumor mongering? So we are building up. So Alfred, we know the criminality that was going on mm? at the buffer stock story facility. Please, let me emphasize that. And so far in this discussion, the buffer stock company has not offered any concrete explanation on why they went into this criminal conspiracy. Why they permitted the company Laments Africa Investments to use its storage facility in Kumasi for this cruel, callous act. They have been left off the hook. They have not been sanctioned. The board chair, Nana Boachi, is all over the place 
saying that this is propaganda. The CEO, Mr. Abdul Wahab, is busy campaigning Pusiga as the MPP parliamentary candidate. And do you know that this law at 851 requires that all storage facilities mm. of food must be registered. Mm -hmm. The National Food Buffer Stock Company storage facility in Kumasi, the FDA found out that it is not registered. The FDA did the investigation. They did the investigation. And they found out that this warehouse that the repackaging and rebagging was yes. has not been certified by for, for storage of food. Absolutely. Can you believe food that? Food Buffer Company. Do, Can you you? Have, do you have that letter from there? Can you believe that? I have the report here. Yes. I see. It let is me, signed. It is signed by the regional head, John Laye Odai Tete. Regional head of who? Of FDA. the FDA, Ashanti region. Indicating that yes. the, the warehouse it's, it's, was... It says report on a preliminary investigation on the alleged unauthorized rebagging of rice at the National Buffer Stock Company. Let me just read through quickly. Mm -hmm. It says the Ashanti Regional Office of the Food and Drugs Authority received an alert on 20th December 2023 about a repackaging exercise which had not been authorized by the FDA being carried out at the storage facility of the National Buffer Stock in the Ashanti region. Mm -hmm. A team of officers were dispatched to the said location to ascertain the veracity of the alert. Let me quickly go to the findings. The findings outlined below were arrived at during preliminary investigation at the storage facility, as well as a meeting held with the Deputy Education Minister, Honorable John Intim Fodjo. So this is quite revealing. Remember the Minister of Education after my expose said they didn't know anything about this and mm -hmm. that they were now going to investigate. The FDA says in this report that Reverend John Intim Fodjo was contacted. The Ministry of Education knew about this. They could have stopped the redistribution of this rice as far back as January this year. They didn't. So the Ministry of Education is complicit. They have serious questions to answer. Let me continue with this report. It says that, and two representatives of the importer, Laments Investments Africa Limited, in person, namely Ellie Dogby, Operations Manager, and Simon Ojei, the Ashanti Regional Coordinator. Now, note that Simon Ojei mm -hmm. is one of two directors of Laments. The notorious laments, which, which had in 2021 been indicted by the Auditor General. I have the Auditor General's report. The Auditor General's report in 2021. Yes. Indicted laments. Indicted laments. For what exactly? For, on two grounds. Mm -hmm. Distributing unwholesome food and, right. and uh, undersupplying. So we're not getting value for money. In 2021. In 2021, yes. Which, which, which Auditor General's report? This is the... Report of the Auditor General on the Public Accounts of Ghana, pre-university education institutions for the financial year ended 31st December 2021. I see. And paragraph 608, supply of unwholesome food items. In controversy of section 52 of the PFM Act 2016, mm -hmm. Act 921, we noted that supplies of 65 bags of rice in March 2021 to Priscilla Huni Valley Senior High and Technical School and five cartons of Kaneshi milk to Ansar Kregua Senior High School by laments ventures were found to be unwholesome mm. at our time of the audit in September, though the expiry date on the product was October 2021. As a result, there's a risk that the items will be served to students in times of food shortage with possible health impl implications. We recommended to the head of the schools to report the matter to the National Buffer Stock Company for appropriate action, action. to be held accountable for any inappropriate disposal of the items. The question is, why didn't NAFCO act? So if we had acted in 2021, we would have prevented the 2024 disaster. And this is the same company? Same company. So I, and, I, and, I've and seen page, page 308, yes. Yes. On the, yeah, yes. paragraph 608, Six zero, yes, page absolutely. 133. And then when you come to page 142, it talks about how these supplies, including laments, were undersupplying. So even in terms of value for money, we don't get value for money. A notorious entity. And, and, and we continued to give all of this company all the privileges in the world. And I'll be coming to that. Let me go back to the FDA mm -hmm. investigative report signed by its Ashanti regional head. So it says that the Moshosho rice, 25% broken white rice, with registration number, it provides all of that. The notified party was the National Food Buffer Stock Company. So take note, the National Food Buffer Stock Company awarded a contract, single source, to laments. And typical of this government, all the scandals have been putting out, 
you see hurriedly incorporated companies. This company was incorporated in July 2020, a few days after they single source them, give them these, these contracts, which they are performing abysmally in terms of its quality, in terms of even the quantities. We are not getting the right supplies, the undersupplying. But back to the FDA findings. It says that the rice was exported from India by Satya Balaji Rice Industries mm -hmm. PVT Limited. The facility had been repackaging Moshosho rice from its original yellow 50 kg polypropylene bags, figure one, into white 50 kg polypropylene bags with the inscription Sidao Ecowas, regional food security, figure two. This is what the FDA found out, the investigations. So I'm not making this up. Now, what's the best before date on the Moshosho rice? It was December 2023. There was no date on the new bags being used for the repackaging. Additionally, the country of origin, India, had been changed to Ghana, thus concealing the identity of the rice. The repackaging exercise was carried out without FDA's approval nor supervision. And then the, the report continues. The storage facility had neither been licensed for storage nor repackaging. So this is the point I was making. Mm -hmm. The storage facility had neither been licensed. Are you aware, Alfred, that as we speak today, despite all of this uproar, this upheaval, this brouhaha, the National Food Buffer Stock Company has still not registered its storage facilities. Can you believe that? The storage facility in the Ashanti region yes. has still not been registered. Has still not been registered. Uh, and these I, are people I, purporting to be feeding our children and caring about their health and presenting wholesome food to them. If you have nothing to hide, I mean, what's happening in this country? Can't we, can't we respect our laws? Can't we follow standards? Do we know the implications of what we are doing? We'll, we'll, we'll so, 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 we'll... so, so NAFCO has serious questions to answer. And I am surprised that people are still keeping their jobs. All those guys at NAFCO should have been fired long ago. Well, Nana Boachi. On, on this mm, matter of the... Uh, the Abdul Wahab, the CEO, should have been fired. If, if, if we had a president... Who cares? On this matter of what the FDA found out, right? Yes. On the uh, rebugging and repackaging in fact, without expiry dates and so on, the FDA says they find the company 100,000 CDs. Yeah. Correct? You have that? So. And, and that, that fine was imposed on Laments Investment Africa for multiple regulatory violations, not the quality of the Moshosho rice imported from India. So that, that this fine was, was for what they described themselves in this letter that I have a copy of, that it was an administrative fine of 100,000 CDs for, for the following regulatory breaches. Rebugging the rice without prior FDA approval, conducting rebugging operations in an unlicensed facility. Yeah. They confirm it themselves. Yes. And failing to ensure FDA supervision during the rebugging process. So the, the fundamental question is that in the midst of all of these violations, at what point did the FDA then give them the green light to go ahead? Brilliant question. Let me just add one more finding. The FDA discovered in this Ashanti Regional Head report that the facility had no qualified or trained person to supervise its activities. The NAFCO storage facility had no trained person, no professional person with expertise at that storage facility. There was no trained person. Can you believe that? This is what we are putting millions of our children through. This is what the FDA and, said. And Nana Boache, Abdul Wahab and co are all keeping their jobs. Can you believe that? Now let's come to this fine. So remember that the police had moved in 20th December, effected an arrest. Then the calls start coming from above. They are released. There is no prosecution. I have intercepted the original roadmap that the FDA decided to carry out on this matter. Dated 29 December 2023. The FDA originally wanted to do three things. One, mm -hmm. immediately get the company laments to desist from the repackaging exercise. Two, the company was to contact the office of the FDA to initiate the process of safe disposal of the 15,000 bags of rebagged rice. This is an internal memo 
of the FDA. Safe disposal. Safe disposal. So it was supposed to be disposed of. Disposed of. Not consumed. Not consumed. That's the FDA. The FDA original position. And then the fine was supposed to be pay an administrative charge of 150,000 Ghana cities to the 000. Food and Drugs Authority by 12 January 2024. 150,000. This was a, Yes. The question that we have to ask is that who intervened? What happened that the FDA had to then change its position? So the fine was reduced from 150 to 100,000. Then, to me, the most important matter, the disposal, didn't happen. And it, it was, re re it was and, distributed. And it was distributed. I have, so, I have so. the evidence here of the distribution to the schools. Where the schools, for in Greater Accra, Presec, my own Presec Legon, <clears throat> my alma mater, Will you believe that on the 2nd of February, before the FDA test results will arrive, because it's important, let me, in order not to, for our, our viewers to follow. So when the arrest was made mm -hmm. on the 20th of December, mm -hmm. on the 21st of December, then this is a vital information so that our viewers will follow. The Ashanti Regional Police Command wrote to the FDA and attached samples from the NAFCO storage facility. Mm -hmm. The letter I have intercepted is here, dated 21st December 2023. It's on the Ghana Police Service letterhead. It's signed by JJ Boy, mm -hmm. the superintendent in charge of crime in the Ashanti region. And it says, Regional Director, Food Drugs Authority, sir, request for assistance. The Regional Criminal Investigation Department RCID of Ghana Police Service, Kumasi Ashanti, is investigating a case of being in possession of alleged unwholesome moshosho bags of rice stocked at the National Food and Buffer Stock Warehouse, Bokrom Kumasi. Investigations have reached a stage where the sample of the suspected moshosho rice needs to be examined to ascertain whether or not the rice has expired or good for consumption. I will be very grateful if your outfit could assist in examining the rice and report, counting on your usual cooperation and it's signed by J.J. Boy. I have followed up, made all my validation, made all my calls. Mm -hmm. They confirm, the police hierarchy confirms that they wrote this letter, sent the samples. Will you believe, Alfred, that the test results, a copy of which I have here, which arrived on the 6th of February, confirmed that there was insect infestation and high fat acidity. Uh, insect infestation? Insect infestation. Of the same rice? Of the same rice. And but however, however, mm? however, Alfred, this is, this is the tragic part. By the time the rise results, test results will arrive from the FDA on the 6th of February, others have come from above that the rice should be distributed to our schools. And this rice was distributed on the 1st and 2nd. I have here the various headmasters signing for the rice on the 1st and the 2nd of rice. The Greater Accra one was received in Presec, Legon. So all the schools in Greater Accra went for their, their share. Achimota, Laboni, Chemu, Tema, Secondary, uh, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, you name them. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have the Konongo Dumasi Senior High School. They all received this on the 2nd of February. Uh, I have here the signed... Um, Sheets, St. Saint, Saint Monica I've Senior High School. One from St. Uh, Monica. Uh, yeah, Bogatanga Senior High School. You know, none of these heads <clears throat> uh, would dispute the fact that they received this rice. Indeed, I followed up, I followed up with, 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 with checks as part of my parliamentary oversight. That, they all yeah, confirmed. Bogatanga Senior High School yes. and St. Monica. Or St. Monica's. We, we're uh, going to put that on the screen right yes. now. Is that Bogatanga Senior yes. High School? So, yes. So, Bogatanga Senior High School. You have St. Monica Senior High School. You have Presec Legon. You have Konongo Dumasi Senior High School. I remember that some of these are, are regional distribution points. So when they receive the rice, other secondary schools can pick them up. So you have here all of these schools confirming that by the 2nd of February, they have received the rice. By the 2nd of February. Mm -hmm. And yet, and yet, and yet, the test results arrived on the 6th of February, four days after. On the 6th of February? On the 6th of February. And then the test results, a copy of which I have here. Mm? I'll, I'll, give you, I'll, I'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. Presence of insect, 
positive. Mm. And it says it does not conform to the compliance standards. Not then so. fat acidity is, is, is also here. Does not conform to the compliance standard. It's all here. And, and this, this, and this is food that our children have consumed. And this is a test that was conducted by the FDA? But by the FDA. And now the FDA is claiming that the food is wholesome. They are, they are contradicting their own 6th February. That is why I say that the FDA itself must be subjected to thorough investigations. The FDA has not covered itself in glory in this matter. Clearly, by their actions, they are complicit in this matter. And I'll mm -hmm. show you why. I have even more evidence of their complicity. I have told you about the original roadmap mm -hmm. of 29 December, and I've heard the head of LIGA at FDA confirm on Joy FM that yes, that was the original roadmap. They were to move in to destroy this rice, dispose it off, get the company fined 150,000, and then to make sure that there's no rebugging at that facility because it's not even a registered facility. But all of that has not been done. Now, let's come to the, the fine, the 100,000 Ghana cities. Okay. I have hold, here... Hold on to that point. Yeah. And what the, for the viewers, um, what's on the screen is the, the monitoring form of uh, St. Monica Senior High School when they confirmed the receipt of some 520 bags yes. of the 50 kg repackaged Moshosho uh, rice from says, India, uh, which yeah. into plain sacks. Is that the pro product, product description there yeah. is Moshosho rice repackaged into plain sacks. Yes. So and location A2 warehouse, mm -hmm. St. Monica Senior High School, Mampong. Yes. That's it there. Yes. I see. And then there's one from Bogatanga Senior High School as well. Yes. Which we'll put on the screen, essentially. Yes. And then you so, have St. Monica's, you have uh, Konongo Dumasi, you have uh, Presec Legon, all of that. So the, the, the school heads, when they acknowledge receipt of this, the description they give there, that it was repackaged yeah. into plain sacks. Yes. This was without the, the expiry without date. Without the expiry date. And... At least, if, well, they wouldn't have known that the country of origin may have changed. But exactly. if it was without expiry date, yes. did, shouldn't have, that have raised some eyebrows well, I, for, the, for the heads, yes. the school heads I've themselves? Asked, I've asked a number of the heads, and they say that they raised it, but, you know, there's this um, uh, fear that you may lose your job, you may be transferred, uh, so they couldn't push it. And, you see, the, the very tragic part is that even with this so-called extension mm -hmm. mm, from December to April, the heads didn't know. And they tell me that this rice is not consumed in one week or one month. Because sometimes the, the, the kids will go on vacation and come back and all that. You know that this double track, I mean, they, they are at home more than they are at school. You know? So there are some of the schools that way beyond this, this so-called April extension, they continue to serve the rice. That is how callous, how wicked. And the heads didn't know. They are finding these things for the first time. They didn't know that. This so-called extension was to April. I mean, how, how wicked can people be? How wicked can people be? So May, June, July, August, people have consumed this rice. They didn't know because, and our laws are very clear. You cannot go and redistribute or repackage or share or sell food without clear inscriptions. LI 1541 is very clear. Act 851 is very clear. And now we've jeopardized the health. Look, if this was a country under any decent leadership, caring leadership, the president will have fired all these people and will have immediately ordered screening of all senior high school students. Because the doctors I have showed this evidence to, the doctors who have seen this FDA test result, they say that, look, this is scary. That the, the implications of this, eating rice that has insect infestation, they say it can lead to liver cancer. That's what the doctors and are saying. The doctors so yes. do that. Yes. That continuous eating, because they were serving them continuously. That it is, you don't joke with, with insect infestation. That it is so dangerous. So, so if, 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 is... if we had any leader who cares, mm -hmm. if the Akufado Baumia leadership had any modicum of care, of empathy, they would have been ordering mass screening 
of our children. Before that, all of these people will have been fired. Now let's come to the fine, the so-called fine. Hmm? Let's come to that. There's the 100,000 Yes, there's another scandal there. So I hold here in my hands a letter that laments Investment Africa rights. I mean, incredible. Dated 3rd January 2024. Addressed to the Food and Drugs Authority. Attention, Chief Executive Officer. Re, unauthorized repackaging of Moshosho rice. We refer to the above subject matter. And your letter reference FDA ASH REG ADM CH H23099, dated 29 December 2023. We hereby attach payment receipt for 50,000 Ghana cities, being half of the administrative charge levied on our company for infractions of sections 1031 and 1301 of the Public Health Act 2012, Act 851. Yours faithfully, and this is signed by David Ajefi Mensa. Even the fine, laments decided. After it had been reduced from 150,000 to 100,000, they decided that they'll pay half. Can you believe and, that? And so the 100,000 has not been paid? In yes, full? yes. They, all the checks I have done, the documents I have, they just paid half, 50,000. This is not even a slap on the wrist. It's a kiss on the cheek. And they've gotten away with it. And this is self-admission that all of what we are talking about is not propaganda. The company itself, in this letter signed by David Ajefi Mensa, is a director, owner of the company. And he says that, yes, I'm culpable, but I'm paying half. We'll, we'll check that. Now, will you believe that you had the day 29 December, mm -hmm. Alfred? That was the day they were written to. And uh, the letter is signed by the chief executive officer. And Alfred, please take note of this. Huh? The 29th of December. 29 December. A lot of things were happening 29 December. I've already told you about the internal memo, mm -hmm. about the original roadmap, that let's go and dispose of this rice. Let's uh, make sure that the company is fined 150000 and all of that. That didn't happen. Mm -hmm. That same 29 December is when the CEO of FDA writes to the managing director of Laments and says, unauthorized repackaging of Moshosho rice. And it reads, the Food and Drugs Authority Ashanti Region Office detected through a response to an alert that your company, Laments Investments Africa Limited, has been repackaging Moshosho rice into different packaging bags with a different brand name, Sidao Ecowas. The country of origin, India, of the rice has also been changed to Ghana, thus concealing the identity of the rice. Additionally, unlike the original bags, no best before date had been indicated on the repackaged bags. Then the letter continues. And then it says that it should pay an administrative fine of 100,000 Ghana cities. Now note, it says that you are to note that the Food and Drugs Authority will take other appropriate regulatory measures, including prosecution, to guarantee the health and safety of the general public if you fail to comply. This is signed by the Chief Executive Officer. What date did I say? 29 December 2023. Mm -hmm. Would you believe, Alfred, and Ghanaians, listen to this, it's shocking. Even before this letter will arrive at laments, and before the fine will be paid, the FDA chief executive officer, that same day, 29 December, writes another letter to laments, discussing with them shelf life extension of the Moshosho white rice. Can you believe that? Same day, they haven't even paid the fine. What is so special about this company? So Why is it that the letter about the shelf life extension of this this particular yes, one was dated not... 29 December? And the that... day the day the company was fined, and you didn't even know whether they will pay or not. And indeed, the company paid. Uh, it was 3rd January that they said they will pay half, but before then, they had they, the FDA had begun discussions about shelf life extension. It, it, let me read, because of time, let me just read the last one. It says, with regards to the best before date, as stated on the product, the FDA is, however, unable to grant your request for a shelf life extension since the authority cannot determine the shelf life of the products. Shelf life determination is the responsibility of the manufacturer and must be based on the data obtained for shelf life studies conducted on the product, counting on your cooperation. Yours faithfully, Dr. Delise, A.A. Darko, Chief Executive Officer. 
The paragraph before says, I kindly note that an, an analytical report on the food product you submitted from the Food Research Institute has been reviewed. It, however, does not include a report on moisture and mold, which are also critical in making regulatory decisions in situations like this. Samples of the product were also sent to the FDA laboratory for analysis. Mm -hmm. It indicated at the time of testing to be wholesome. Please find attached the certificate of analysis. Yes, it is on that part that yes. they indicate that, yes, the, the, that the rice was wholesome. That the rice was wholesome. So that's why I want to find out if the, uh, that, and, that, 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 and this that, is 29 that, December. And yet yes. there is a 6 February examination results from FDA, which says that the rice had high insect infestation and high fat acidity. And so, so what's going on? And, and between, so to, between 29 December and the, and the February. Yes. What happened? Because if this 29 December letter yes. of application for the extension of shelf life yeah. was granted by the FDA for this company. And then in February, they find out that based on the, the details that you've read in this report of yes. the test yes. by the, the FDA. Yes, the 6th February test results. Yes. Two months later, they did their own test again and yes. found out that the rice was insect infested and, and, and high in what? Yeah. Uh, high fat acidity. Half, high fat acidity. Then what was the, the basis for the grant of that extension of the shelf life of the company. I think that's where the fundamental question is. Let me, at this point, yes. I acknowledge the, the presence of Dr. Kojo Insafuapoku, who is the chair of the Energy Committee of Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya's campaign team. In fact, he is also a member of the MPP and aide to Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya. Nana, Kojo Insafuapoku, thank you so much for coming thank and you. good morning. Good, good morning. morning. How are you? I'm well, thank you. And thank well. you to Honorable Blackwa. This is the first time I'm actually meeting him in person. I see. Can you believe mm. that? All the while. <laughs> this is the Good first time I'm actually meeting him in person. Interesting. Okay, I've yeah, never met him in person before. Yeah, thank you. I see. Yeah. But I've known you for quite a while. I've known him from far for quite a while, mm -hmm. but the first time I'm actually meeting him mm -hmm. in person. He's a very, uh, he's an infamous man. <laughs> I'm sure you meant, to say, I'm, 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 I'm sure you meant to say famous. Infamous. <laughs> How can I call somebody who is sitting there wearing John Famous when I'm wearing DMB? Uh, he's an infamous. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I, mean, so I, I was telling somebody that at this rate, in 2028, and this will have no option but to make Okuji to vice presidential candidate. Hey, I beg, you, I, beg you, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you. 2028. I beg you. Obviously, but John and Jane are going this At year. This so, man. 2028. Uh, so, <laughs> let, me, let me acknowledge our presence as well. He's just introducing me. Lawyer Martin Pebo is private legal practitioner. He's also a leader of one of the individual bondholder groups and um, the convener of the Kome Prekurilo Day demonstration, one of the for most human rights lawyers we have in this country. Good hey. morning. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Kansi. Not for most human rights lawyers, so don't give me trouble. Why? Yeah, I mean, Why? rookie. I'm, I'm, we are I'm, trying. I'm, 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 very, I'm very happy that uh, you paid him back in his own coin. See, he's all comfortable. <laughs> yeah. He was putting me in the same trouble. Oh, you're <laughs> there. Hey, no, it's no, racist, no, no. sir. You no, know, no, we no, call no. it the matter no, speaks no. for itself. No, no, At this rate, 2028, Okunye no, no, no. told for vice presidential candidate. I beg you. A sign sealed and delivered. Why not president? I beg you. Why not president? You want to even deep in my hopes. No, but if, hold on, let's assume the unthinkable happens. Happens and no, NDC no, no, comes no. into power. No, no, That's no. not going to happen, but touch wood. No. And 2028, John is leaving. Why can't he be president? No, no. Oh, Why are you no, giving no, him no, vice? No, uh, the uh, man has said no, Alfred, let's, let's come okay, back to Moshe. No, but, no, but, no, but, you, you have, you, you've led your party well. I'm sure you can be president. Because of the way we are a bit conservative, they will say, oh, he should grow. A bit more house, so that I can't say, Oh, let me greet Garman Kentucky Tech through the second Kentucky Tech through the second. Hey, Garman said, Yeah, he owns this program. Oh, that's ah, true. That's yes, true. hey, for the man to have come out to say that he is looking for justice for um, what do you call it, uh, Sicily Adapa, the Sicily Adapa case, yeah, we would never stop mentioning this matter until we get that justice, huh? Garmanche says that duty bearers should explain how Cecilia Dapa had so much money under her bed and other parts of her bedroom until date. There is no justice. That is the question for us. Number two, let's greet Sofa Ekufu. Yes, Antua. Ekufu Ado's own relation, but who is not shying away from holding Ekufu Ado to 
uh, account. Yeah, accountability is her watchword. That's she true. doesn't care that, look, there are relations, right? And so we should always allow that. You remember last year, she was leading the demonstrations, right? Yeah. And then, of course, please, Johnson is a do this Johnson is do auditor general. Please, okay. uh, 52.5 billion. 52.5 billion. How much did we borrow from the IMF that four years on you still cannot account for this money and you want a Kufado to escape through the back door? You see why a Kufado so, and Baumia will have to answer for this so, 52.5 billion. Fact, this yeah. is going to be a major ah. issue that yeah. we will get into as yeah. well because I've received further documentation on this particular money and, mm -hmm. and this issue mm -hmm. so i promise you okay that uh because i needed some more information on this yeah before we table it up for conversation okay. so that we know exactly which angle we are taking with this particular issue of the 50 over 52 hey, and i haven't seen my kinky yeah. and fish we, we, it's all about cost <laughs> yeah, of living. we'll talk about it it's crazy yes. people are we'll dying eh? people but, are but, dying but, hunger but, is but, a big problem big big, big 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 problem yeah. Yeah. mr black will have to leave us at some point so yeah. i need to and and then i'll bring you in yeah. so no, so it'll be good point. for me to take a bite of all the the plenty information is put out there for at least so that we interrogate it while he's here indeed we are not going to do that in his absence. Let me just put it on record. But yeah. the record, there was a question about between 29th December mm -hmm. and February, mm -hmm. what was happening. Because yeah. the FDA, in their latest reaction to your issue, they yeah. say that they, they, they confirmed that the rice was safe for consumption, which you read in the 29th December re yes. report from the FDA yeah. after rigorous lab tests. Yes. Now, you are showing me a letter dated February. Yes, that is February two months after. Yes, they confirmed the wholesomeness of this rice. Yes, and between that 29 December 2023 and February, some distribution was done, only for them to come back in February and say that the rice, after their test again, was infested with with with, with insects. Insects and had high fat acidity. And the, uh, uh, the analysts at the Food and Drugs Authority mm -hmm. who signed these examination results are Bright Abibio Mensa, Marian A. Komi, and Joseph Ofosu Sion. Their signatures are here. The, 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 the high insect infestation and the high fat acidity, the, the mm -hmm. FDA examination certificates. These are the officials who signed it. They are here. And, and even after this, they did not issue any directive to the company that by the time to, by halt, the, to halt the distribution of this by rate. the time this test result look so many funny things happen by the time this test results arrived on the 6th of february the rice had been distributed to the schools on the first and second of february and then guess what this laments letter that they are sharing to media houses saying that even for the the, the distribution mm -hmm. they got permission yes we have a copy of that. You have a you. copy of that. The letter. laments. We will put have you on. paid attention to the date? February 9th, mm -hmm. when the rice had already been illegally sent to the schools on the 1st and 2nd of February. They were now applying to the FDA on the 9th of February. And let me read a letter. It's signed by David Ajefi Mensah, the Chief Executive Officer of Laments. Chief Executive Officer, Food and Drugs Authority. Dear Madam, request for rebagging and supply of Moshosho White Double Poly Sorted Rice, Indian Rice, 21st, I mean 25% broken. I'm writing on behalf of Laments Investment Africa Limited to request your assistance in facilitating the rebagging and supply of the remaining quantity of Moshosho White Double Poly Sorted Indian Rice, which currently bears a best before date of December 2023. As per the approval letter, reference number dated 15 January 2024, Laments Investment Africa Limited has obtained shelf life extension approval from the Food and Drugs Authority until 30th April 2024 mm -hmm. for the aforementioned rice product. That's this, the laments letter. Yes. This extension aligns with regulatory standards mm -hmm. and ensures the continuity, the continued quality and safety of the product. However, mm -hmm. despite the extension granted by the FDA, we have encountered challenges stemming from public perception, potential political backlash, mm -hmm. negative media reportage, and the need for extension explanation to certain state institutions such yeah. as parliament. These factors have necessitated our request to repackage the remaining rice from the original sack, which bears the best before date of December 2023. Mm -hmm. We understand the importance of upholding consumer confidence and compliance with regulatory requirements. Therefore, we kindly seek your assistance in expediting the process of rebagging and supplying the remaining quantity of rice 
ensuring that it meets all necessary quality and safety standards. Your prompt attention to this matter will be greatly appreciated. Yes. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you require any further information or clarification regarding this request. Can you believe this? The impunity. Meanwhile, by 9 February, all the rice was gone. They thought that we would not intercept all these documents from the schools. So, so the, the, the rice was distributed before the Before, request. 1st and 2nd of February. Check the St. Monica's, check the precept. And, and check, this Lamette's uh, letter was on the screen. Let's flip yes. to the, the, I mean, the, can the, you believe the, that? the, the, and, the and first to, page. Let's flip to the first page. And to even have the audacity, the audacity. Look, so indeed, people the of Ghana. So indeed, was dated February 9th. Yes, February 9th. People of Ghana, Lamette's is not a charity organization. We pay them good money, millions of Ghana cities, to give us quality rice. And then this company decides that they don't want to make losses. They must profit at all costs, make money at the expense of the health of our children. And then they have the audacity. Look, Alfred, how many times haven't you seen FDA people go shut down businesses, collapse people's business because they are having products on their shelf that have gone beyond birth before date? How many times? And then you have this company, it's, it's, it's being treated as if they own the country. A company which will have been blacklisted as far back as 2021. They, they, on 20th December, they were caught having rebacked 15,000 of the 22,000 bags criminally. Then, even before they will get the so called approval, writing on the 9th of February, pretending that they are now seeking approval, all the rights had been distributed. I mean, can you believe that? No, so the FDA uh, approval, w when was it given? Which date was, was on the, the, that, that particular letter? Which, which, which approval? The, the, because this one, the, the request that you are making reference to, the yes. letter that we have a copy of is going to be on the screen right now, which was written on the 9th of February. Yes. Requesting the... for rebagging and supply of Moshosho White yes. by Laments. Yes. You're saying that this was done after the fact. After the fact. After the rice had gone to the schools already. And the, the rice was distributed between the 1st and 2nd yes. of February. Yes. That's why I say this matter. We need a national commission of inquiry because FDA is complicit. The National Food Buffer Store Company is complicit. Remember the rebagging was being done in their facility. You have the Ministry of Education. Complicit. They were informed about this according to the FDA investigative report. Then they pretended they didn't know. Feigned ignorance. When I first put out this, this, this expose. They didn't take steps to protect our children placed under their care. They owe a duty of care to these children. They did not take steps as ah. the ministry responsible for the protection of our children. So this matter, we need a national commission of inquiry. And somebody should be agitating for the mass screening of our children. You don't joke with this. Have you seen the videos of the Mochocho rice at the warehouse? I have put out those videos. I'll share them with you. I mean, mm. even on the face of it. Okay, can we move on? I see. No, but it's important. So in the end, what the FDA's position has been on this matter, and I, I need to bring it in because they spoke two days ago. Yeah. And I'm sure that you're privy to the position that they have put out earlier, that they required laments to provide further evidence from the manufacturer to justify any additional extensions, which they said... Laments applied for that extension of birth before date and they took them through the processes mm -hmm. and once they qualified to have the date extended the FDA said they, they did that and eventually also gave them that go ahead to have the, the rights distributed. They then took notice of the no expiry date on this particular rebacked rice and that was what they were fined for not the wholesomeness of the rice. But then the fundamental question that is raised here is what the FDA report itself, the lab report mm -hmm. itself says. And at what point was that considered in the scheme of things? Yeah. Yeah. So the FDA. So, so look, what the FDA should have done in this matter, upon the tip of 20th December 2023, they should just have followed the original roadmap, the internal memo, which I read to you of 29th December, where they said they would dispose of the rice and make sure that this company doesn't engage in this any longer. That's what they should have done. They should not have pampered this company, brought them close, gave them all of what they want. Look, this business of shelf life extension, 
When you listen to even the FDA officials themselves, Ministry of Education officials themselves, what do they tell us? They say that, you know, there's a difference between best before date and expiry. Everybody knows that. It's, it's trite, it's basic. Mm -hmm. This is, this is, this is no, this is, it's not rocket science. Just for the benefit of our... And then, they, and then they add that, you know, the, the difference between best before date and expiry is that for expiry, it's very contaminated, so poisonous, you can't consume. But for best before date, what it means is that the quality has reduced. You've heard them. Mm -hmm. Quality has reduced. Uh, it's not at its optimum. Uh, in terms of its nutritious value and all of that. The question that we should ask, if these people had any respect for us, the Ghanaian people, why should our children be served food? Let me just go with the argument. Let you put the 6 February FDA results, which shows that there was insect infestation and high fat acidity. And let's go with the FDA argument. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the, and our colleagues in the MPP who are parroting this. Mm -hmm. Why should any government be serving its children with food that now has inferior quality. Food that you cannot guarantee is optimum nutritional value. Why? Why can we be so callous and cruel? Look, in other countries, even the best before food in great shape, they are passing legislation to enhance its nutritional value, because there's a link between nutrition and high IQ. Mm. Michelle Obama, what did she do in all her eight years? Her campaign as first lady, that what she took up, her, her, her course that she took up as first lady, was how to enhance the food of American school children. You know they provide one, one hot meal a day at lunchtime. She, passed, she, 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 she ensured that there was legislation to improve the, nutri the, the nutritional value. So how is it that in Ghana, we seem okay with our officials telling us that, oh, we extended the best before. When you extend best before, you can't guarantee the quality. The nutritional value reduces. But let your children eat it like that and accept it. Meanwhile, this company has not been made to refund what we paid for. The millions of Ghana cities we paid for in this contract is for us to have top quality rice. And, 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 and it is so mind-boggling. It's, 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 it's absolutely shocking. What I, what I hear... That officials can look at us in the face and, and tell us all of this hogwash. 